The 2019 discovery of Captain Matthew Flinders' remains during railway station excavation works in England should remind us to reconsider his contribution to the early charting of the coast of Australia and, indeed, the country's name. Even as late as the Second World War, it was found during the defence of Australia that the most reliable charts of some areas were drawn by Matthew Flinders in the early 1800s, and some are still in use today. Although we will take up his story from the time of his arrival in 1795 on HMS Reliance to what is now called Australia, Matthew Flinders already had extensive early seafaring experience after joining the Royal Navy as a servant at 15. He served in the French Revolutionary War and as a midshipman to the notorious Captain Bly on HMS Providence. During his voyage to Port Jackson and the nascent Sydney, he became friendly with the ship's surgeon, George Bass. Soon after arrival, they set out with a boy called Martin to explore the coast south from Sydney in a 2.4 metre boat called Tom Thumb, brought by Bass on the Reliance. Next year, in another boat called Tom Thumb 2, they travelled further south. However, a storm forced them to put into what is now Port Kembla, where they spent a few days with the local natives. Then, in 1798, as Lieutenant Flinders, he was given command of a 10 metre sloop, the Norfolk, and set out, again with Bass, to chart Van Diemen's Land, now called Tasmania. Until his circumnavigation, it was thought it may have been part of the mainland. He returned to Sydney before a dash to the Cape of Good Hope to collect livestock for the colony. During the return journey, he acquired Trim, the cat that would accompany him on subsequent exploration. It earned his admiration by climbing back after falling overboard. 1799 saw the Norfolk with a crew of eight venturing north from Sydney to arrive in Moreton Bay six days later. Most of his dealings with the local people were friendly, but the southern tip of now Bribey Island earned the name Skirmish Point after a spear was thrown, then a native wounded by musket fire following a skirmish over Flinders' hat. Flinders named a waterway Pumastone River, unaware that it had separated an island and, with Bungaree, an Aboriginal friend from Sydney, climbed one of the Glasshouse Mountains previously named by Lieutenant Cook in 1770. After returning to Sydney, the Norfolk was stolen by escaping convicts in 1800 and wrecked on what is now Stockton Beach. Aboard the Reliance in 1800, he returned to England where, with the influence of Sir Joseph Banks, he began plans to chart unmapped sections of the New Holland coast. The Dutch had mapped much of the west coast in the 1600s, with Cook charting most of the east in the late 1700s, but there was still speculation about some uncharted areas. Flinders was given command of HMS Investigator, a refitted, renamed 30 metre former coal sloop, and promoted to commander. Although he had just married a patient Anne Chappelle, she was prevented from travelling with him and so would not see him for another nine years. The Investigator arrived at Cape Lewin in December 1801, then continued eastward to chart the Great Australian Bight and the two gulfs of South Australia. However, he lost eight of his crew when a small boat capsized near Port Lincoln. At Kangaroo Island, they obtained fresh kangaroo meat. Although the Napoleonic Wars were underway at the time, he compared information with French explorer Nicolas Baudin after a chance meeting in an area he named Encounter Bay. From the now named Bass Strait, he entered Port Phillip and climbed Arthur's Seat and the Yu Yangs before heading on to Sydney for a refit. In late winter 1802, with 88 crew, including Bungaree, Investigator headed north towards the Great Barrier Reef, accompanied by the Lady Nelson until keel damage forced her to return to Sydney. 
Flinders navigated through the reefs and rounded Cape York into the Gulf of Carpentaria. Interactions with natives till then had varied from cordial to mildly threatening, but here one of the crew was speared, leading to the shooting of two natives. To add to his worries, the ship was leaking and rot was found in its timbers. So Flinders decided against further inshore charting and set sail for Timor to attempt repairs. Then, continuing around Western Australia, he had to abandon two anchors off the south coast, which were found 170 years later. When the investigator entered Port Jackson, almost a year after setting out, he had filled the gaps between other surveys of the coast, and Bongaree became the first Australian to circumnavigate his country. On inspection, the ship was judged unseaworthy and relegated to be a storage hulk. However, after a later assessment and major rebuild, she returned to sea and to England, eventually serving as a prison hulk before being refitted to see private service beyond the middle of the century. Without a ship to continue his work, Flinders set sail for England as a passenger on HMS Porpoise, but it was wrecked on the Great Barrier Reef. So Flinders sailed the ship's cutter back to Sydney and organised the rescue of survivors. In December 1803, he again attempted to return to England as commander of HMS Cumberland, but again the ship's deterioration forced him to seek repairs, this time at Ile de France, now Mauritius. Unfortunately, England and France were at war and Flinders was detained as a spy. Trim the Cat disappeared during his imprisonment but Flinders was able to work on a book and send some documents back to England, including his map in which he named the Great Southland as Australia. He was released in 1810 and returned to England and his wife of nine years. Their daughter Anne was born in 1812. Although in poor health, he set to work to publish his charts and complete three books. He was already unconscious when the final proofs arrived the day before he died in 1814 at age 40. So he did not see his book published nor the general adoption of his favourite name, Australia. He is also credited for using Canon Echoes to measure distance to land and improving compass accuracy with the Flinders Bar. Although he named nothing after himself, his name now applies to over 100 Australian places and a botanical family. All in a life of 40 years.